in heaven in Jesus name we come Lord we thank you for another privilege another chance another opportunity we thank you father God for Bible study we thank you father God for the idea of witnessing we ask you to bless us tonight as we come before you to learn more of you in Jesus name we pray amen thank God amen amen, amen. thank the Lord again God has brought us together again, and we thank God one more time for another privilege, another honor, another great opportunity to honor him. Tonight, we're in chapter 2. Chapter 2 is called Pinpoint. We're in chapter 2. We're talking about soul winning. Winning souls for Jesus the Christ. Amen? Amen. Winning souls for Jesus the Christ. Calling men attention to Jesus that we will be able to win souls. Amen. Amen. So we are we are making sure that we are educated in soul winning. Amen. Amen. We want to be educated in winning souls for Jesus. 
Anybody want to be educated? Anybody want to win souls for Jesus? We want to be educated in winning souls for Jesus Christ. We're coming from the book called Sharing the Gospel. And we're looking at chapter 2. Uh, we have some readers. Uh, 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. Will you stand and read for if you're the reader for that particular verse? 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast thou hast done foolishly. Therefore, from henceforth thou shalt have wars. Amen. Amen. So God is talking. The God of the universe. The God of all creation. The God who has blessed us. God is talking. In the eyes of God, are running to and fro. The eyes of the Lord are running to and fro throughout the whole earth. God's eyes are running to and fro throughout the whole earth looking for somebody he can show himself mighty through. God is looking everywhere. God is looking all over the place. The eyes of the Lord are looking to and fro throughout the whole earth, looking for somebody whose heart is perfect toward him. Looking for somebody he can brag on. Looking for somebody whose hearts are turned toward God. The eyes of the Lord are running to and fro throughout the whole earth, looking for somebody he can be proud of. Looking for somebody he can brag on. Looking for somebody whose hearts are turned toward him. Looking for somebody whose hearts he can utilize for witnessing. Amen. And then he says, when he has not found them, it's because they have done foolishly. They have not had hearts that are perfect toward God. Is there anybody perfect other than Jesus? Not one. So this word perfect here doesn't mean that you have a perfect attitude. You doesn't have to have a perfect demeanor. You do, you're not perfect in your spirituality. You have a heart turned toward God. God is the one who makes us who we are. So our hearts ought to be complete toward him. Our hearts ought to be turned toward him. Our hearts ought to be hearts that love him and show him love. So we're talking about pinpoint. The soul winner must keep the patient's attention focused on Jesus Christ. You have some blanks on your hand now. The soul winner must keep the patient, must keep the patient's attention the patient's focus must keep the patient's attention focused on Jesus Christ. In pinpoint, the soul winner is a paramedic. The word para means helper. The word para means someone who comes along beside. The word para, sit over here, brother, sister. Sit over here, please. Thank you. So the word para, the word para means that we have a helper. We have a helper. The word para, paramedic. He helps the medic. He helps the doctor. Para, cleat. The Holy Spirit walks along beside us. He's our helper. Para ministry. Para church. It is a para ministry in a para church that walks along beside the church to help the church do what the church doesn't have people to do. So a para ministry or a para church is a organization that is a spiritual organization or a social organization to help the church get things done. Because no one church has everything they need in the body. 
Therefore, we need para ministries. We need para churches. We need those who come alongside. So when we look at pinpoint, the soul winner is a paramedic. The soul winner is trained to take the patient's vital signs. The soul winner takes the patient's vital sign, analyze the patient's condition. We take the patient's vital sign. Who's the patient? The unsaved. We analyze the patient's condition and we will come to the conclusion every time that he or she is not saved, is not born again. And the paramedic, the soul winner, he takes the patient's vital signs, he analyzes the patient's conditions, and he transports the patient to the great physician for medical treatment. When you see a paramedic, the paramedic is usually either in an ambulance or on a fire truck. And when they arrive, they are just there to assess the conditions. They are looking at the patient. They are checking vital signs. They are analyzing the patient's conditions and they transport, transport the patient to the doctor. As soul winners, it's our responsibility to get in touch with the patient. It's our responsibility to make sure the patient gets to the doctor. Therefore, we understand we can't save souls. But it's our responsibility to get somebody to the point where soul saving can take place. And that point is Jesus the Christ. He is the great Physician. That's why the Bible says no man can even come to the Lord, can come to the great physician unless the Holy Spirit draws him or her. Every person who is unsaved needs a doctor. When you look at our conditions of our world today, people can't blow their horn because people will kill them. People can't walk the street Little children can't. Senior citizens can't. You can't even be safe in your house. True. It's because individuals have heart problems. They have heart conditions that need fixing. And no one can fix it but the doctor, the great physician. Jesus Christ. If our world is going to get any better than what it is now, Guess what's going to have to happen? We're going to have to turn to Jesus Christ. Amen. If situations going to be better, we're going to have to turn to Jesus Christ. So our, our situation, our responsibility is to get me into the doctor. Amen. People are hurting. They are hurting. They're hurting in silence. They are they're suffering in silence. They, and then when there's an outburst and when there's an overflow, when there's a, a troubled person that shows up, we first thing we say is, we never expected that out of him or her. Mm -hmm. But because we have a heart condition, we got to get to the doctor. The great physician, the doctor. Who is Melissa? Patient. That's, that's one answer. Mm -hmm. Who is Melissa? The unsaved. The unsaved. Sister Davis, come and tell us about Melissa. The the come on and tell us about Melissa. Tell us who Melissa is. Now, you know she ought to be able to talk about her own child, right? <laughs> come on, tell us about Melissa. Melissa is a um, is my child. It can be anybody's child, and Melissa has a heart condition. So we want to make sure that we get Melissa to the doctor in order to save Melissa, because uh, Melissa cannot be saved unless she sees the doctor. So Melissa is representing everybody's child that we have to get to the doctor. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. 
Thank you so much for introducing us again to Melissa. And because it's our child, we'll do anything we have to do to get it. We will run red lights, we will run stop signs, drive on the left side of the road, we will blow our horn. We want to get people to the doctor. And in order for us to be responsible in soul saving, we have to look at every unsaved person as our very own. Because just as what we would do for somebody else who's in our family or our child, we ought to be willing to do it for everybody. Amen. We ought to sacrifice mm -hmm. to win souls for Christ. On your paper, you have a pinpoint the patient condition with prayer. If we are going to win souls, remember from chapter one, prayer is necessary. Prayer is primary. Prayer has to be prioritized. We need to make sure we pray. So let's, let's look at this, this prayer. It says, dear God, I am grateful that you have saved my soul. Every soul winner must, have to, got to be born again. If you're going to win souls for Christ, first of all, you need to be saved. If you're going to lead people to Jesus Christ, you must know Jesus Christ. In your time, in your spare time, look at, look at John chapter 6, where you find this little, little boy in your spare time. Look at John chapter 6, you find this little boy, and Andrew brings this little boy with a, with a lunch to Jesus, and over 5,000 people get fed. If you look further down there, Andrew brings Peter to Jesus. If you look further, Jesus is discipling all of his, um, his disciples right there on the spot. So it says to us, that those who we are aware of, those who we know, those who we have a relationship with, we ought to disciple them. Dear God, I thank you for saving my soul. I am so grateful that God has saved my soul. Now God bless me to be a good steward by allowing me to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with others. We are called we ought to be determined to share Jesus Christ with other people. We have to get to a point in our lives where sharing Christ must become a part of the top of our agenda. Not the last thing. You see, God can't be a last resort. It must be the only resort. He must be the only resort. Leading people to Christ ought to be something that we look forward to. And those of you who are members of New Beginning Church, you ought to know like the back of your hand how to lead people to Christ. Because you see it demonstrated over and over and over and over again. Where do you see it demonstrated and when do you see it demonstrated? Anybody? Yes, sir. When do you see it demonstrated in this church? Anybody? Sunday school. Church. Sunday school. Bible study. Bible study. Worship service. So if I was to call on anybody in this room, you could take us through the process of winning souls for Christ. Is it difficult? No. Is it hard? No. Should we do it? Yes. Why? Why should we? Why should we even concern ourselves with that? Especially the folks that's just going to die and go to hell anyway, right? That's what some of us have come to the conclusion. We, need to get as many people to heaven as possible. we ought to desire to get as many people to heaven as possible. So God bless me to be a good steward. Meaning, God, you have given me another opportunity to reach somebody for you. God, I'm grateful that you've saved me. And you didn't have to be the worst critter on the, on the earth to be saved. We came here with the need to be saved. 
So God, since you blessed me to be saved, Lord, what I want you to do is bless me to reach others for Christ. Bless me, allow me to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with others. God, keep me focused. What, is, what do we want to stay focused on? Jesus stay focused on Jesus. This is not our gospel. It is Jesus' gospel, right? It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as it is the gospel of Jesus Christ, we need to stay focused. Lord, keep me focused. God, keep me focused. Help me remember to keep Jesus the main attraction in the center of attention. You ought to be praying this prayer. Lord, help me. Help me keep Jesus the main attraction in the center of attention. How do we do that? Can we do that? Can we do it in our voices? Can we do it in our lifestyles? Can we do it in our dress code? Yes? Give me an example of how we can reach somebody through our dress code or a lack of dress code. Okay, so dress appropriately. Well, for, for most people, appropriately is what some people don't call appropriately, right? Dress appropriately. Um, you can't uh, say that, come as you are. I don't have nothing else to wear. I'm coming as mom, that's not what that means. So, come as you are, meaning your heart, bring, bring, bring your burdens to the Lord, right? But are we to identify those who don't dress appropriately? Are we to scold them? No. Should we even talk to them about? No. No? No. Because you want to get them here first. Okay. So and it's it's here. more important for us to clean them up yeah. after they get here than try to clean them up and then ask them to come. So we gotta we have to reach people where they are, right? However, they ought to be able to look at us and tell that we're different. Are you different? Do people see a difference in you than the world? A lot of churches in, this, in, the, in the late 90s, in the early 2000s, went to what is known as seeker-sensitive churches. Y'all know what that is? Seeker-sensitive churches. Seeker-sensitive churches were churches that would change their format, change their appearance, change how they did things in order for seekers to come in. In order for people who were in the world to feel comfortable. However, the seeker sensitive movement died out. Some of you hadn't even heard of it, right? Because what they did is, I remember, I remember there was a, a, a Christian club right down there where Grammys were. Many of y'all know what Grammys Club used to be. So, uh, we got some saved folk in here. Been saved a long time. How many, how many know what a screaming rooster is? Oh, the screaming eagle. Mm, I see. I figured I'd hear something after a while. The crowing rooster. The red rooster. What? So... There was, a, there was a Christian club. And so I wanted to go out this night to the Christian club. When I got to the Christian club, it was a club. It was a club that was just a club. I didn't see any difference. I didn't hear any difference. I didn't hear anybody sharing Christ. It was just a club. That was my first time and my last time. It was a Christian club. And it was the kind of club that I didn't even want to be seen in. But they did it under the banner of Christianity. And there was nothing different. 
I could walk next door to grandma's and get the same thing I got over there. The dress code wasn't different. The, the, the color charge wasn't different. The lighting wasn't different. The movements on the floor wasn't different. I just went from one club to the other. <laughs> and I saw absolutely no difference at all. We want God to keep us focused. And we want God and the world to see that Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. We want God to make sure, and we pray, God, make sure I'm a living example of what you want. Why you women wear pants to church then? Why y'all wear makeup? That's the olden days. Oh, so David says she wear her set pants on Wednesday night. That ain't got nothing to do with anything. All about the heart. Well, some 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 churches preach that women should not wear pants. But when you talking about scripture, you got to deal with the context and the content, right? Women should not wear men pants, right? Men should not wear women pants. But does the pants wearing really matter? God wants to be the center of attention. God wants to be the main attraction. Now, we as Christians, should we watch what we wear? Somebody, somebody, you know, every, every, every time, every year this time of year, you know, they, they feature pastors on, online with their dress codes. They featured one brother getting out of his car. He had on pink shoes, pink pants, pink shirt, pink tie. And he was stepping out. And somebody made the statement, man, he, he's ready for Easter Sunday. <laughs> so I made the comment, this is what I'm going to wear this coming Sunday. How would that deal with your psyche? How would that deal with your personality for the day? How would it deal with your worship? Can take their focus off God. You think so? Is a distraction? Yeah. Why is it a distraction? I'm well dressed. The brother's shoes were shut. His tie was matching. His shirt was matching. And on top of it, he had a pink brim. I think Resurrection Sunday, that's what I'm going to walk in here with. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes? <laughs> Why do y'all have a problem with me wearing my pink suit? Because that's not you. And because it's not me, then you're going to spend more time looking at me than hearing what God has to say? Is that the point? No. Some guys can get by with it. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But I couldn't get by with it, y'all. Why not? What is he teaching? Is there a problem with my dress code? If I wore all pink? Maybe I wear for breast cancer awareness week and that'll be okay. That'll be okay? Breast cancer only. We have to make sure that Jesus is the center of attention. We can't pull the attention to ourselves. We got to make sure that Jesus is the center of attraction. He's the main attraction. It's not in our dress code. It's, it's not in our hairstyles. Jesus has to be the main attraction. I may, I may walk in here with a ponytail or something. How about that? <laughs> That's not good either. Well, y'all sure are a traditional church. Y'all stuck in tradition. 
What's wrong with me, Brother McGill, wearing my ponytail on Sunday morning? I see brothers with ponytails every day. Yeah, y'all don't say anything about them. We don't see them. Mm -hmm. Jesus has to be the center of attention. Jesus has to be the main attraction. And then the last part of this prayer says, Lead me into obedience to the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to always respect the presence of the Holy Spirit. We want the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, to direct us. God is interested in you leading people to Christ. Who has Acts 1 and 8? Acts 1 and 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. We shall be witnesses after the Holy Spirit has come upon us. And now the Holy Spirit resides in us. That's why the songwriter says he walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. That's because he's in us. Don't be so unwise that you will say the Holy Spirit hit me. And when the Holy Spirit hit me, I don't know what I did. The Holy Spirit, Brother Miles, is in us. The Holy Spirit, he resides in us. The Holy Spirit, he lives in us. The Holy Spirit, he leads, guides, and directs us. Why well, I keep saying he? Because people say it. And the Holy Spirit is the third person of the triune God. He is an intelligent being. He is the third person of the Trinity. He is the Holy Spirit. And he is intelligent. And because he is intelligent, he doesn't make you do certain things. He doesn't hit you. I was teaching this same course one, one year at another church. And I was talking about Love, the, the passage, the, the lesson we went over last week about love, hope, and God's word, and how we got to show the patient, show the unsaved love under any conditions. And a brother in the audience asked me a question. You keep talking about love. What if I come up there and hit you side your head? What you going to do? In my life? The brother asked me that right in the middle of teaching it. He said, man, you keep talking about love. You keep talking about people loving each other. And what if I just come up there and slap you side of the head right now? I took a deep breath, sighed, just stared at him for a moment. I said, well, if you come up here and slap me side of my head, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's, um, what do y'all call it? Tough love? I'm going to show you some love. Are you with me? So the bottom line is we want, there are a lot of other things I could have said, right? But here I am being put on the spot right in the middle of my lecture, and I got to be calm and cool enough to say I don't know what. Because somewhere in my heart, I got to find some love. And if he had instantly done that, I don't know if I could have recovered fast enough to find love. Are you with me? Now, you may criticize me tonight, but what would you have done? So, Darren, what would you have done? What would you have said? So, suppose, well, how would you have handled it? So, Richard, how would you dealt with that? Oh, no, don't, don't tell me. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. 
So we have to exemplify love and make sure we keep the focus on Jesus. Hmm? I don't know what I want to know. I have not a clue. I probably would have just hugged him until he stopped breathing. I probably would have just loved on him. And if they had a day of walking and said, what happened? No, I just loved on him. I just loved him to death. We must pinpoint the patient and vital signs. The Holy Spirit, once he come upon us, or once he enters us, then we can be witnesses. And we must witness in our surrounding area, our little small area. Then we go to a bigger area. Then we go to an area that doesn't look like us, wasn't reared the way we reared. And then we go to the utmost parts of the world. So we have to make sure we are studied up to witness. We are prepared to witness. We pray to witness. Pinpointing the patient's vital signs, the opportunity. God is interested in your availability. God is interested in your availability. He is not interested in your capability. We all are capable. We all are capable of sharing the word of God. We all have the ability of leading men, women, boys, and girls to Christ. We all do. But God is more interested in your availability than he is your capability. We're capable. But we, we make ourselves available. We all are capable. We all have what it takes. But we will we make ourselves available. We can all sing in the choir, but will we make ourselves available for practice? We all can usher on the floor, but will we make ourselves available before the other folk get here to be here on time? We all available to turn knobs in the media center, but will we get here in time continuously to prepare before everybody else gets we capable, but will we make ourselves available? Will we make ourselves available to be used by God? I told you last week that it is an awesome thing to be used by the awesome, amazing God himself. It is amazing to me that God thinks enough of me to use me. When you got other people that don't realize how amazing it is until they run from the opportunity. God use me. Lord, I'm available. Some writes, Lord, I'm available to you. Lord, use me. God is more concerned. God is more interested in your availability than your capability. Always be on the lookout. For and take advantage of the privileges God grants you to be a witness. Always look for an opportunity for God to use you. Always take advantage of the privilege. It is a privilege. Let me tell you, it is a privilege to be used by God. Always take advantage of the privilege God grants you to be a witness. Be an opportunist. Be an opportunist. Be an opportunist. Be someone who take advantage of every opportunity. You have some friends that are opportunists. Every time they want something, they take the opportunity to beg you for it. They are opportunists. You have opportunities all about you in your life. And these opportunities... Opportunists are going to always look for a way to better themselves. 
We got, we got guys right now, at the very moment, breaking in somebody's house. They are opportunists. Did you see the video? Lady at home with her little nephew or a little boy. At 2 o'clock in the morning, a woman rang the doorbell talking about DoorDash. The opportunity to catch her off guard in the middle of the sleep, in the middle of the night. And what people normally do is, who is it? And while she's talking to the woman at the door, the plan was four guys were breaking her house on the backside. They're opportunists. That's why we don't want any women walking in the parking lot alone. Because there are so many opportunists out here. They looking for a way to, to, to hurt somebody. That's why we don't want any children or women at the church without a man or two men here. Because there's too many opportunists out here. God wants us to be an opportunist to do what is right and let us win souls for him. Be an opportunist and allow God to use you to win souls. Allow God to use you. Allow God to use you for what is good. Let me tell you. The guys that are robbing and breaking in people's houses and stealing, these are such smart people. The guys that are hacking computers, they know computers, they know internet. These are intelligent guys. But they use it for the wrong reasons. God wants us to be opportunities, opportunists and use it for the right reasons. Take advantage of every opportunity you can get to win souls for Christ. Prime example, you go, go out to eat. Your waiter or waitress may be down and out that day. Or they may be overjoyed that day. Regardless of their condition, it is an opportunity for you to lead them to Christ. It's an opportunity. We, we, you know, the older group used to go to docks after church and, and, and after revivals. So I went out with the older group that night. And I said to the brother that was sitting across from me, when she comes back, the, wait, the waitress, when she comes back, I'm going to lead her to Christ. She hadn't said she was unsaved. She had not said that she needed Jesus. She didn't look like she was down and out. But the Holy Spirit alerted me. It is time to share Jesus Christ. She walked away, got our stuff. We started eating. She came back to check on her, us. And I say, have you, have you ever received Christ in your life? Or even, can I pray for you? Open the door. Allow the Holy Spirit to open the door. May I pray for you? So I think my first question was, is it possible for us to pray for you? And tears just start screaming down her face. I had just told the brother, man, when she gets back, I'm going to lead her to Christ. I said, is it okay if we pray for you? Tears start screaming down her face, and that said to me, God just threw the door. Boom, wide open. I don't need to know her business. I don't need to know anything about what she's going through. She may choose to tell me that, but my focus is getting her to know Jesus the Christ as her Savior. God threw the door wide open. She started crying. That was a door for me. And I ran through that door with a 4 5 40. Blazing speed. Now these guys are at 4-2 and 4-3. God threw the door open. So it went from may we pray for you to have you ever received Jesus Christ and then you get to find out all these other things. We just let her talk. She started talking about how I got to move out. I can't. I don't have a place for my baby and me. And this is a little bitty young girl. And I said to her, you don't have to close your eyes. 
because I want her to keep a job. You don't have to close your eyes. You can just continue to look down at us or down at the food or whatever you may choose to do. But what you must do is repentantly believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And out of obedience unto God, he gave his life as a ransom for you and me. And we have to make it simple. Simple enough for her to know that Jesus died for you. And if it had not been anybody on planet Earth but you, Jesus would have died for you. We have to take the opportunity. Accept the opportunity. To win souls for Christ. That girl stood there that day with her eyes wide open and introduced Christ. We introduced Christ to her and she gave her life to Christ that day. Simple opportunity. On the other hand, if you go to a, a, a line, a grocery line, and the, wait, the waitress is having a terrible day, God may be throwing the door open. You can't go off on her because she's going off on you. God is trying to open the door and you talking out louder than she is. Hey, you don't know who I am. You talking to me like that and I, I'm telling you. I witnessed that from a church member from another church, a person that I knew really well. The lady, the lady was in line and her daughter was just going off. The lady is a church member. She held her composure. Her daughter was just going off. She was trying to calm her daughter down. She was just flipping out. And I just stood there and watched. And the lady presented herself as a bona fide Christian. Her daughter presented herself as a bona fide fool. Right there in the store. Don't miss good opportunities. Opportunities are being presented to you every single day. The homeless man is an opportunity. Don't pass up the opportunity. Be an opportunist and allow God to use you to win souls for Christ. Be not dismayed by rejection. Don't get so upset over rejection. Don't let it blow your mind because you've been rejected because God is being rejected and not you. Don't let your feelings get hurt so easily. We used to witness in Third Ward and people almost like we made their day for them to slam the door. It made their day for them to slam doors in our faces. I told you don't come in on. Bah! Some people are like, <laughs> I said, well, brother, gird up your lungs. Let's go to the next door. It's a good opportunity to move to the next door. Jesus says, shake the dust off your feet and go on to the next one. If I bring you this gospel of Jesus Christ, you don't want to accept it, shake the dust. Move on to the next one. Be an opportunist. And as an opportunist, you need to make sure that rejection does not blow your mind. Don't be the made, but it's made by rejection. They're, they're being, God is being rejected and not you. One of Satan's tactics is to create frustration in an atmosphere of chaos. He wants to just create confusion. He is the author of confusion. Who is? Satan is. He is the author of confusion. The soul winner cannot over be cannot overcome the darks of the Satan of Satan in the flesh. The soul winner cannot overcome the darks of Satan in the flesh. It is a spiritual warfare. It is a spiritual warfare. You can't fight spiritual warfare in the flesh. Paul says there's a war going on. It's not a flesh and blood war. It's a war in heavenly places. There's a war going on. 
It is a war in the higher epsilon. There's a war going on. Paul said you can't fight this war with flesh and blood. And then he says, put on the whole armor of God. Because it's a spiritual warfare. The soul winner must walk in the spirit. Yes, Satan is very good at what he does. The devil is busy. You know, we walk around all day saying, you know, the devil is so busy. The question becomes, are the Christians busy? Are you busy? Are the Christians busy? Are you busy about the Lord's work? Yes, the devil is very good at what he does. He's good at it. He's good at confusion. He's good at misunderstanding. Some people have fallen out for 20 and 30 years, and if they just backtrack and come together, they will understand it was all a misunderstanding. All it was just a misunderstanding. I didn't understand what you were talking. You didn't understand what I was talking. I wasn't there, and you thought I was there. You thought I said this. It was all a misunderstanding. The devil is good at causing chaos and confusion. He's good at it. You know, he tampers more with family members than anybody else. Right. He, he's good at it. He, he, he's good at people that have lived together 30, 40, 50, 60 years as brothers and sisters and, and family members and cousins. And the devil is good at causing chaos and confusion. And all it was was a misunderstanding. All it is. Uh, I think it was Pastor Moton. Pastor Avin Moton talks about there's a little girl in every woman and there's a little boy in every man. There's a little boy in all of us. There's a little girl in all of us. And what little boys and little girls do, they want their way. And they will go to any extent to get their way. They fall flat on their back and start kicking and crying. They'll run out the house and slam the door. They'll tell you, I hate you, I hate you, and you're the one that's feeding them. Because little boys and little girls have not gathered themselves to be under control. Now, I couldn't do that at our house. A man, a man in the neighborhood said something to his daughter. She's a teenager. And, and she went in the room and slammed the door. When she came back from school, there was no door. He just simply took the hinges off, took the door off, put it in the garage. She came back and said, Daddy, why you take my door off? He said, that's my door. I do what I want to do with my door. And I didn't appreciate you slamming my door. The devil is good at causing confusion. I remember I went to one of my classmates' house and, and, and he had written on his door, Dean's Den. Del Dean. He had written on his door, Dean's Den. Well, I went home. I got me a magic mark. I'm going to put David's Den on my door. When daddy got through speaking in tongues, <laughs> Kelly, you know he spoke in tongues, don't you? When daddy got through speaking in tongues, I didn't ever think about that ever, ever, ever again. Because daddy was a man of little words, but when he spoke, E.F. Hutton listened. I was going to put on my door, David's Dean, because Dean Dean sounds just like, you know, D.D. First of all, Dale had a room by himself because he had a sister. It was three boys in that room. I didn't own anything in the house. I had me a stencil. You know how you get a stencil and you go through, trace through the stencil? And it was going to be nice and neat. I had got my ruler and I measured from the top of the door, measured at the bottom of the door, considered the space that one inch in between. I was going to put on my door Davis Dean. Yeah, so what, what you doing? 
and the rest is history. <laughs> the devil is good at painting a pretty picture for us. The devil is good at setting us up. He is the author of confusion. He loves causing chaos and he's good at it. But remember this powerful truth. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the whole world. Let's look at John chapter 1 John chapter 4, verse number 4. 1 John chapter 4, verse number 4. 1 John chapter 4, verse number 4. The greatest one is in you. Who is that great one? Anybody? Some people say Jesus. The Holy Spirit. The greatest one is in you. He, the Holy Spirit, is in you. Who has it? First John chapter 4, verse 4. First John chapter 4, verse 4. Okay? For you of God, little children, and have overcome them, become, because he who is in you is the greatest, and he is in the world. He is the greatest. He is the greatest. Okay, now who's the greatest boxer of all time? Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. Some people say Muhammad Ali. I say Cassius Clay. Oh, okay. So Cassius Clay, Cassius Marcellus Clay, right? Right, Sister Day? Cassius Marcellus Clay, most known as Muhammad Ali, he used to walk around and say, I am the greatest. I am the greatest. I'm able to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. My name is Muhammad Ali. Who was it didn't want to call him Muhammad? They kept calling him Classes Clay. He said, that's all right. You call me Muhammad Ali in a few. And he said, what's my name? Bam. What's my name? Bam. Your name is Ali. Your name is Muhammad Ali. <laughs> God is the greatest. He's the greatest of all times. And because he's the greatest of all times, the greatest one is in us and he makes us great. We don't have to fear any man because the greatest one is in us. The greatest one. I told you before, Big Mama did not have a third grade education, but she had connection with God. She wasn't scared. She wasn't bagging down. I, I came up during the era of Fannie Lou Hamer. And Fannie Lou Hamer went to jail. Fannie Lou Hamer got beat up. And when she got out of jail, when she got through getting beat, she put a bunch of folk on the, on the bus to go back to boat. There's something on the inside that stirs. Some motivation we have that keeps us moving. Regardless of what goes on, there's something in us that keeps us stirred up. Let me say it like this. There's somebody in us that keeps us stirred up. I wouldn't turn around now for nothing. I can't turn around now for anything. Jesus is in me. Jesus, my eyes on Jesus. I cannot participate in anything other than that with Jesus is leading. That's why we can't take on any little social fight. I can't take on any fight that everybody's involved in. I can't take on this fight and that fight and that fight because it takes my attention off Jesus. It, it, it distracts me from listening to the Holy Spirit. So I will not take on every little fight that comes up. Yeah, it's a worthy cause. Yeah, it's worth fighting. It's worth somebody fighting. It's just not worth my fighting. Because I'm limited in what I can do and think about at one time. 
And because I'm so limited, Brother Miles, I can't focus on two, three things at one time. I got to get this one carried over first. Got to get this one done first. Got to get this one done next and this one done next. And I had to put them all in a row and focus on all those at one time because I'm limited in my ability. But one thing I cannot stop focusing on, and that is Jesus Christ and his righteousness. That is Jesus Christ and what he did for me over 2,000 years ago in Calvary. I got to keep focusing on Jesus and Jesus alone. The greatest one is in me. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The greatest one is in me. And because he's the greatest one in me, then I have to do what he says to do. The plumber was out here the other day. And his helper was coming from the truck with the invoice. And I looked at him. I said, take that invoice back over there. I don't want to see it. He just kept walking with the invoice. He, I said, man, put that invoice back in that truck. I don't want to see the invoice. And so then I said, man, get back over there with that invoice. Don't bring that invoice this way. And the plumber looked at me and said, he knows who pays his paycheck. <laughs> So we're going we gonna to obey the one who keeps us, the one who carries us, the one who walks with us and tells us that we are his own. We got to obey Jesus. And I'm here to tell you, I walked away with the invoice because he wouldn't take the invoice back. That's how it is with Jesus. He has paid the cost on Calvary. He died on Calvary. He was buried in a borrowed tomb and he rose from the dead. He paid the cost for you and me. And we can't obey anything else other than Jesus. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. We need to make sure that we use every opportunity to get to know Jesus. And if some of you do not know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, this is a moment that you can get to know him. If you would, just bow your head with me and invite him into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've trusted Jesus as your personal Savior now, you're born again, you're saved, you're on your way to heaven, and God is in you, and he makes you who you are. In this spiritual warfare, we need Jesus. He's the champion. He's the one who fights for us, and he makes a difference. If you're here and you have never received a church home, never been a part of a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church. But Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. Let us know if you want to join the New Beginning Church. Let us know if you've received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior tonight so we can rejoice with you and be a blessing in your life. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. If you want to give electronically, you can do so by giving by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting. Dot Jesus at yahoo.com is our Zelle account. If you want to give by way of mail, you can 
mail your gifts to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Lord, Father, we thank you for these gifts. We ask you to bless every giver. In Jesus' name, amen. This Sunday, March the 19th, we begin our fasting period. Everybody's aware, we begin our fasting period this Sunday. No pork, no beef, no sweets, no sodas, no sin, no fried food. For 21 days, uh, we will end our fast the day before, before Resurrection Sunday. So starting this Sunday, from the time you go, anytime after 11.59 p.m. on Saturday, we begin our fast. No pork, no beef, no fried food, no sweets other than breath mints. And don't put a bunch of breath mints in your mouth <laughs> other than breath mints and no sodas. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I got a whole lot of amen. Amen. We are praying that God bless our church, bless our families, bless our health, our strength. In our fasting and prayer time, we are praying for Sister Carol Lovelady. Sister Carol Lovelady, she's still in the hospital. If you notice that uh, afternoon service, the leadership should have been given by Pastor Artist Lovelady. He had to cancel his service and he rushed his wife to the hospital. She's still in the hospital and she needs our prayers. She needs our prayers for her health, for her strength, for her weight. We, and she needs our prayers for the wisdom of the doctors. Ask the Lord to give the doctors wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So she needs, she needs our prayers. So we want to pray for Sister Carol Lovelady. Carol Lovelady. Carol Love Lovelady is one of the professors or facilitators for the Sharing the Gospel book. And she's traveled with us to share the gospel good news of Jesus Christ. And we want her back in the field, back in the mission field. So we need to pray for Sister Carol Lovelady. Amen. Amen. Are there any other announcements, prayer requests, praise reports? Thank you so much for all day Sunday. Thank you so much for being a welcoming church, for being a church that, that God has blessed and everybody's bragging about the New Beginning Church and how we hosted the Holy Street Church and uh, True Vision. Thank you so much for being a part and all of our visitors say that they enjoyed being here. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your preparation. Thank you, Sister Cora Woods, for your team and, and you for, for the sacrifices you made. And I want to thank the men for coming out and rearranging things and making preparation for this day. All hands were on deck, and that's just what we need. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for being a part. We had an awesome time in the Lord all day long, and people came back, and you came back. Thank you so much for, for making this 30th anniversary a great anniversary for the Lord's church. Amen? Amen? Thank you so much. Thank you so much, so much. What other announcements we have? Did I miss any? The 19th is the official anniversary. Oh, I know what I'm missing. Uh, in order to begin our fasting time, we will have a catering service on site this coming Sunday. And, and they will be serving chicken. And they will be serving shrimp. Chicken and shrimp will be the, will be the main meal. So please uh, patronize one of our local vendors, uh, Deeds Catering, Deeds Catering. Please patronize our catering. They'll be available right after service and they'll be parked out front. And we wanna, we wanna patronize uh, one of our local vendors and, and uh, we wanna make sure that we, we buy into to, uh, these businesses that support us, amen? We want to buy, and in the last 20, uh, 24 months, uh, many people have come out to support the New Beginning Church financially, and we want to sow back into to those who have supported us, amen? So with whatever you do, uh, make sure that
that you be prepared to get your food to go uh, right here on our campus. Uh, we will have um, a service right here on our campus for food, and you need to pay for it. Amen. You need to you need to bring some money. <laughs> you need to pay for it. Amen. So in order to begin our fast, they will have have um, they will have shrimp and chicken. And then when we break our fast, it will be something fried. Amen. We will invite them back again to cater for us. So whatever you do, go ahead and prepare to bring some money. After you've given your tithes and offering, then uh, be prepared to patronize um, our local catering service. Amen. Amen. Won't we stand to be dismissed? Also, thank you, musicians. Thank you, you. Thank you, young people. Thank you, Deacon. Thank you, brothers, for for being an intimate part of what happened on on this this past Sunday. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. God, we thank you for just who you are. Lord, we ask you to empower us to witness. Bless us to be about your business. Bless us to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Lord, bless us to commit to sharing the gospel. Commit, Father God, to presenting practical guidance of evangelism to those we pass. Lord, prepare the way for us to share Bless our church to be an evangelistic church. Bless our church, Father God, that our church will move forward. And bless us, Father God, that we will always keep Jesus the center of attention in the main attraction. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling. Now to him who is able to present us spotless before the only wise God. Unto him be power, be glory, in dominion. Until we meet again, let us say together, amen. 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 God bless you. God keep you. You are dismissed. We are uniting the church. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you.